simple, gracious, and altogether empowering. Now, I clearly understood I was not being offered the role, but the tone was so utterly positive and welcoming that I felt that I was being tendered a very serious and real possibility. The note, it boosted my confidence, it put wind in my sails. The note invited me to come in and claim the role. And that to me is a snapshot or a note card of who John Landau is. For the past 15 years, time and again, I both experienced personally and observed the qualities of kindness and grace with which he does his job. John produces films, and he does so by producing the best in his colleagues, by empowering and by offering possibilities. Now, if I responded to a note with that kind of passion, imagine how I felt when I read the script. I sent word up the chain that I was blown away by the script, amazed by the part, and I would be honored to be given the opportunity to be a part of this remarkable undertaking. Well, that was shortly followed by a, a transcontinental phone call between James Cameron and myself, which was in turn followed by a, a quick trip to Los Angeles on my day off. At the time, I was doing eight a week at the Roundabout Theater in New York City. I made the trip to meet on a dark Monday with Jim in the kitchen of his home in Malibu. We talked and we worked. We worked on the armor base scene from the script. A wheelchair-bound Jake Sully meets a weightlifting forge, marine to marine. It was not an audition, or at least it never felt like one. Thank you. It was a deeply engaged rehearsal, and it was serious fun. And that's what working with Jim Cameron has been from that day to this. Serious and a hell of a lot of fun. And as for the second item, well, it's a carved wooden bust of a scarred and troubled warrior. A Maori warrior, I should say. Perhaps a chieftain. Very strong, very fierce, intense, and scary beautiful. And the note accompanying the bust said, slang, this made me think of Quaritch. Happy birthday. Jim. An interesting Hollywood ritual we get to take part in today. Two gifted filmmakers at the top of our industry will take off their socks and shoes and place their bare hands and feet in wet cement, guaranteeing for all time their immortality in this business. Yes, boys, it's too late to get a pedicure. Your feet will be enshrined for posterity, just as they are. It's especially appropriate to be performing this rite in front of the historic Grauman's Chinese Theater, sadly one of the last remaining movie palaces from the golden age of Hollywood. It's still showing movies on its huge screen with state-of-the-art sound. But for those of you who think the golden age of Hollywood is in the past, I have news for you. These two guys are creating a new golden age of cinema right now, right in front of us. This is a golden age partnership. Two pioneers of the present and future of movie making who have taken 3D out of its schlocky place in, in B-movies and created what Jeffrey Katzenberg refers to as the third great revolution in film. Boy, are we lucky they found each other. Looking at somebody who, when they were a seven-year-old kid, uh, their parents took them on a trip to California from New York and tried to do all the tourist things possible, from, from Venice Beach to Disneyland to right here at Grandma's Chinese. And when I went back home in the years that passed, the memory that stayed with me was this one. The one of being here and being 
that seven-year-old kid going around and putting my hands and feet in the, in the footprints and handprints that were here. And then, in 1997, I premiered a movie here, Titanic. And it was like, oh my God, this little seven-year-old boy is now preparing a movie that they're a small part of at this theater. And I thought that was the end of it all. But today, being here, it touches my heart. It, it makes me so thankful to my parents, Evie and Eli, who were producers in the film business, who exposed me to all the wonders that the business has to offer, and the power that movie can have to change people's lives, to have them look at our world differently. I'm thankful to them, I'm thankful to my sisters, Tina and Kathy, and I'm thankful to my wife, Julie, and my sons, Jamie and Jody. And I'm thankful to our, our new partners, it's not so new anymore, at Disney, for all they've done for, for to support Avatar Way of Water, and, and Jim, in his singular vision of what the Avatar movies need to be. And I'm thankful to this guy next to me for, for letting me go on the journey with him to, to help realize the dreams that he has. And as Sigourney Weaver said, we had close to 4,800 people working on the movie. So there are two of us up here on stage today, but I look at when we sign down below, and put our hands in feet, and I'm doing it for every one of the people who worked on our team, who have made Avatar The Way of Water possible, who made Titanic possible, and all the other movies. Thank you all very much. I call it a dream job, uh, a fantasy. I still pitch myself every day that I get to go to work and do, you know, this amazing thing. It, it's, it's done by a team, members of our team are here. Uh, great cast members, Slang and Sigourney. I've, I've worked with Slang, as you said, what is coming up on 18 years. Sigourney, I don't even want to go there. We were both kids. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for uh, for 40 years, and uh, we're working with uh, the guys over at Disney now, which has been an incredible pleasure. I have to say, I just want to say to reiterate what John said, you've been amazing partners and very supportive. Uh, Fox and, and uh, the overall uh, umbrella structure at Disney has been great for us creatively uh, in terms of the partnership and in getting the film out there. And I, I remember, Alan, something that, that you said, uh, and you know, kind of in the maybe in the darkest hours, every film has its darkest hours when we're concerned about getting it done and uh, you know, budget and all those things. And he said, our most important mandate is quality. Quality, you know. He stood behind that, they stood behind us, and enabled and empowered us to, to put the quality on the screen and give the audience a really special, unique kind of experience. So I just want to say that up front. I've got a lot of gratitude in my heart right now for, for our entire team, what we refer to as the Avatar family, because many of them we've worked together with for 15, 16 years uh, or longer, our acting troupe, our core cast, Sam Wellington, Zoe Saldana, uh, and obviously Sigourney and Slane. Uh, Sigourney now back in a very different role, playing a 14-year-old girl, which at heart and psychologically she basically is. <laughs> Yeah, I don't like it. 